Hello people, this is Dr. Novak again. In this video, I receive emails about how successful people are, but sometimes I do receive emails of people who are having troubles and not very successful, or not being as successful as they should be. And there are reasons why. So that's what this video is going to be about. I received this email of an individual and he's showing me his aquarium, which I will show you. And I'm going to tell you of his problems. And let's see, uh, basically, what he's maybe done wrong. And if he watches his video, maybe he can correct what he's done wrong. And uh, we'll just call this individual Jim. Okay. Um, so I don't disclose their identity. We'll call him Jim. Let's see. I'll cut through the chase. And I'll get to the part that that he wrote. That I have a 40-gallon breeder tank, which is the same as my um, goldfish aquarium, which is a 40-gallon breeder. And a 20-gallon sump with seal 2 In my sump, I have two uh, biosinosis bags and the typical filter sock and chemipure bags I made myself. Thank you. Meaning he must have watched my video on how to make a generic, you know, um, chemipure. About six months ago, I tore another failed planted tank apart and started over with a slow-moving plenum. Now, he's been in aquariums, according to his letter, for over 10 years. So he's, he's had a uh, planted tank that has failed. He took it apart. So we can understand that this is not a uh, complete newbie to the aquarium hobby. He's been doing it for over a decade. And uh, so we understand he does have a little bit of knowledge with aquariums. Okay, as he writes, I did not have a screen to put over my under gravel filter, so I used excuse me, 100% nylon fabric that water can go through, but not the substrate. Also that the cat litter is hard to come by, so I use fluorite red. Perfectly fine. I had emailed you about this, and you gave me the thumbs up on that fluorite red. No problem there. Since then, I have been struggling with algae, dark black on my plant leaves, that I have to scrub off with a toothbrush and the typical algae on the glass that I have to clean weekly or it will take over. I went two months before I was fertilizing and I'm using Aquarium Co-op's Evergreen. I'm sure you have a million other questions for me, but these are the basics. Also, my sand has gone from beautiful white to dirty looking grayish, and I'm now starting to form cyanobacteria on the sand. Little green circles. Okay, so once in a while I get emails or phone calls of a hobbyist having problems. And of course, then the questions have to start. Uh, he made a plenum, but he didn't tell me is it a Schober plenum or is the plenum a slow moving plenum I think he says slow moving but he doesn't give a lot of detail if it's a Schober plenum it will act one way a slow moving plenum means he's using some means to move water through an uplift tube or something like that or, or his canister filter or something is taking water from the bottom of the plenum slowly and moving it through. Now, the first question I ask, because, and I think I've said this in my videos, is if you're using a slow moving plenum, which I advocate more so than the uh, Schaubert plenum that uses nothing, just basically you just put your substrate on top of a, uh, a plenum and that's it. I found the slow moving plenum works better for all my applications that I have done than just using the Schober plenum method. But anyway, um, depending on the matrix of your substrate, now we're getting into sands, 
we get into clays, we get into dirt. As you notice, I use like the Lee uh, Beta filter. I cut, I put it onto the uh, under gravel filter plate or whatever. So I know that I'm only have about six inches of tube and it's only about three eighths in diameter. And I know it's only going to pump so much water, no matter how much air I try to pump through it. Some people use the one inch tubes, they cut them shorter, and that's a little different. That will pump more water than the 3 8 tube. Anyway, whenever you use a matrix or a substrate that's tighter in its matrix, like that of a natural system, you, will, you may have to pump more water through it, just like I'm showing here in my aquarium with the goldfish. Look at how the water is being pumped through, more so than what a lot of people would do. This, like I said, depends on what kind of substrate you have. Are you using a mesh? Well, that's going to hinder water movement also. Uh, little things like this are all going to determine how much water can be moved through the plenum. I have this question asked me, how much water should be moved through a plenum? And I always write back, it depends on your substrate. It depends on how you set it up. Did you use a fabric? Did you use a screw? All this plays a part in how much water or how many bubbles you would be using. Uh, there's a fellow I know who used all fluorite red, fluvo red, fluorite red substrate, 100%. And his bubbles are moving very slowly because that has a tighter uh, not a tighter, but a, a looser matrix because it ranges larger in size, the substrate does, than let's say, for example, sand. Where in my 90 gallon, because I'm using a uh, different substrate, the fluvo substrate for plants, it is a larger diameter substrate, and therefore, I move the bubbles slower than I do the goldfish aquarium. So I don't know what he's doing there. Is he is he not moving enough water through the plenum and his fabric is hindering water movement? I don't know. But I'm just bringing that up. That can be a problem. That's up to the hobbyist to determine how much air should you put. I like, that's why I like using the 3 8 tubing versus a half inch because you stay on the safer side of not pumping too much water through, just making a complete uh, aerobic nitrifying bacteria substrate without it completing the nitrogen cycle. But anyway, we'll get on to this. I know this sounds a little complicated, but let me get on to this. The next thing is... He uh, doesn't say how long the tank's been up, but he says two months into the aquarium, he started adding fertilizers. I get this all the time. People start adding fertilizers way, way too soon into the cycling of the aquarium because they are so concerned about the plants they have bought, the price they have paid, and they are so concerned that they're afraid their money is going to be wasted and the plants are going to die that they're going to start feeding their aquarium with fertilizers that aren't needed. Uh, for example, the Goldfish Aquarium has not received any fertilizers at all. None. Zero. Not even iron where the 90 gallon has only basically received 99.9% .9 iron only without nitrogen or phosphates added to that iron. I, see, I, th I think I even said it, C-Chem makes it. I've even told people what I use. Basically, only iron has been added to that aquarium. The fertilizers have been left out because the plants are still growing and some of the plants are over a year old, 
So therefore, why would I add a fertilizer when I don't see really the plants are needing it? This is one big fault of hobbyists right off the bat. Start adding fertilizers way, way too early in the game. And this then upsets the balance of the aquarium. This can cause algae problems. If your higher order plants that are using cannot use these fertilizers, the algae will be more than happy to take over and start using them. This, believe me, it's one of the biggest, hugest problems I get with hobbyists. Start adding fertilizers way, way too early in the ballgame because they are so scared they're going to lose their plants. And even though they use CO2, their plants may not be photosynthesizing enough because as I see by his pictures, I see no plants purling, even though he says he's using CO2. So you know his plants are not working if they're not creating air bubbles. The next problem that hobbyists run into, brand new hobbyists, is now he's not brand new, he's been doing this 10 years, but duration of light. I repeatedly have said brand new tanks do not need the duration of light that you're constantly being told. Start out with about six hours of light. Nope. Brand new hobbyists are telling me, oh, I have my lights on for eight hours. I have them on for 10 hours. I have them on for 12 hours. You're going to ask for trouble when you set up an aquarium. And if your plants cannot photosynthesize within that six hours, you have to find out why. Is your lighting not strong enough? Are you not giving enough CO2? This is where the problems come in. Over lighting your tank, under lighting your tank, and duration of light. Start out with six. Like I said, have the lights come on when you come home from work. Have them on until you go to bed, like 10 o'clock or whatever. Why do you have your lights on when you're not even enjoying the aquarium? There's no reason. All you're going to do is be asking for algae problems. You're just asking to open up a can of whip ass on you. That's all you're asking for. Then you start adding fertilizer because you say, oh, my, my, my plants aren't doing good, and you are just adding more and more problems to you. I get this all the time. Leave the fertilizers alone. Start dealing with what your plants really want. And they don't need the duration of light for even eight hours. Start out with six. Look at your plants. If they're not doing good, are they purling? Are your lights even bright enough? Remember, I did a whole video on lighting. So these are questions I don't know. He, you know, he like he did say that I just gave you a basic. So is he moving fluid through the plenum fast enough? Like as you saw my goldfish aquarium, I don't know. Duration of light. Once again, I don't know. After two months, he decided to add fertilizers. Why? If you look at his aquarium, he really doesn't have a lot of plants. Was his plants showing stress, dying? Don't forget, all plants go through a period of they have to reacclimate to your aquarium and everything else because you don't know how those plants were grown. And that's going to cause failure. You're going to go through algae stages. Like the little circle, green circle algae. You see that grow on plants. Today, like in my 90-gallon aquarium, I don't even grow that anymore. The tank is all broken in now. It's been up over a year. That algae doesn't exist anymore. Where you have this, what is called spot algae. It's a green spot. Usually that comes around when your nitrates are real low and your phosphates are real low, but that soon will subside too within a few months. I don't even grow it anymore. So the only thing I always tell people, stop the fertilizing. Unless you have an aquarium like you see on the internet where you have a lot of plants 
and you got a lot of CO2 and you're saturating your aquarium at 30% CO2 and you got the right kind of lighting, then you can fertilize because your plants are going to utilize that food source. If you don't have the bright light and you don't have the CO2 at saturation, you could just be over fertilizing your aquarium, and which means algae is going to be the dominating plant life that you're going to wind up having. And this is what's going to cause your problems. So if you look at his pictures, no, things don't look good. He's got brown algae going on it, things like that. Cut back on the duration of light. Stop the fertilization. Make sure your plenum is moving, which I don't know. Um, maybe you'll have to increase your bubbles. Move it faster. Okay. You also have nutrient producers, which means... If you look at his sump, he has rings in there. Those rings are going to cause the nitrogen cycle, and that's going to have an end byproduct of nitrates. Nitrates are going to be a food source for your plants, and it's got to be dealt with some way, somehow. So to conclude this video, we look at uh, pictures like this. Every photograph I have shown you in this is using a plenum or an oxy filter plenum. And as you can see, the plants and stuff like that, it makes you wonder why some people are so successful and other people are struggling. Well, uh, you know, like a duck through the desert. Why? And we see that uh, a difference could be lighting, either too long, not strong enough, CO2, their, their plants aren't photosynthesizing, they're not either using enough or they are using enough, but their lighting system could be failing. The plenum may have a uh, substrate which has a tighter matrix, like that of sand will be tighter than what you're looking at in this aquarium. All these things play a part in how well the aquarium is going to act. After all, if people are successful, like we're looking at, how how come they're successful and others are failing at doing the same thing? Anyhow, this is Dr. Novak. I want to say thank you very much for watching. I hope uh, the uh, video was educational to you, that it was educational to you, that you maybe found something out that you needed. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. And until next time, happy fish keeping.